some of you guys might be wondering why is it that I did not give you in the last three days any scripture references? Well, I'm going to surprise you because you're going to get scripture today. Um, just to answer my own question, this concept of humility of heart is so core and foundational. I'm sort of assuming that it's something that is part of our DNA as a Christian. And if it isn't, <laughs> I don't know, just study the word, uh, do a word study on what humility is and allow the Holy Spirit to readjust your thinking and your mind. But, legitimate question, it's all very well and good talking about these subjects, but unless it's rooted in Scripture, then it, it's like the wind that's blowing the pages of my Bible right now. It's of no use. So let's have a quick look. James, chapter, book of James, chapter 4, verse 6 to 10 is our starting point. And uh, the, the um, Apostle James says this, quoting from the Old Testament, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. You've got it. Continues, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve mourn and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. Not a popular message to grieve, mourn and wail, change your laughter into mourning and joy to, gr to grief. However, or joy to gloom rather, but if it takes that for us to have a change of heart and to come and put ourselves into a position where in, 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 a, in a place where we can hear from the Holy Spirit, where we can respond to the Holy Spirit, where we can follow the Holy Spirit's leading, then it's a small price to pay. Um, and I want to go up in the book of James here a little bit earlier, this was James chapter 4. I want to look here at James chapter 3 verse 17, give ourselves a little bit more context. 3.17 But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Wow, this stuff is so rich and the scripture is just so amazing. It's like honey and indeed it is full of nutrition for the heart and mind and soul and spirit of both you and me. Now going, stay with James. James chapter 4 verse 4, which is just above the bit we started off with. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Now you could say, right, James is using hyperbole to reinforce his point, etc. I'm not so sure. I really believe that James is saying that if you are in bed with this world system, you are an adulteress. You are illegitimate.
legitimately having a relationship out of bounds with the kingdom of God. Ultimately, it's a choice. Do we want this world or do we want the world to come? We live in this world, but we're not of it. Our nature has been transformed if we are Christ followers. And we've been called to a new lease of life. We've been called to be born of the Spirit, born anew of the Spirit, inner transformation. And it's that inner transformation that causes the holiness of God to break out like a seed within us and to grow if only we will allow it to and not stubbornly reject the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to end today with reiterating what James said in chapter 4, verse 6. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to your humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Skipping to verse 10. Humble yourselves, therefore, before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Folks, this is foundational to our faith. Humility of heart. Thanks so much for watching. Pray for me that I might indeed have a humble heart as I make this broadcast, as I live my life day by day with my family. Thanks so much. God bless.